Okay, today we're putting on my favorite patient. We're gonna put on some uh, motion appliance. Motion appliance is a class two corrector. Um, we have a video about it if you're really interested. But here I'm just gonna sh we're gonna show you the process for applying it. So ideally we like to have the um, motion appliance loaded before we have the patient back. Harmony is currently putting on the uh, NOLA. If you have the NOLA on there, it keeps the tongue dry because we're gonna be bonding on the upper and lower. We're typically bonding lower sixes or sevens with these and um and then these typically go on the upper threes and sixes there's also a class three version um but there's also what we call shorty version where they go on upper fours and sixes um and then there could be any kind of uh, variation of those so anyways what i'm doing just loading the adhesive uh, on here they come like this they come in one will have a red cap on it and one will have a black red is for right okay and another way you can tell is there's two dots on there as well, okay? That is important. There is a way that um, these are designed to go. Let's hit that with your glove. So as you can see me loading that in the places underneath the light here with the red one by it, so I know. And, okay. And so I have that loaded. And then you can see here, before we start this video, I already preloaded. I like to use these distal um, bracket holders to place, these are the Kaplan hooks that will go on the bottom, and that's which is gonna wear the bottom elastic too, up to the, the hook on the motion appliance, okay? So I have the right sides loaded right now. I'm gonna put that on there. Um, it's nice if you have those all done beforehand, but that's okay. Um, on the tray here, what you need is, don't need that. Scalar mirror is good. Don't need this. So basically, just need this, uh, the bonding stuff here, and then you need your shirt, of course. Anytime you bond. One thing I don't see here is a curing light. So I'm going to grab me a curing light. Okay. All right. So when we're bonding, any type of bonding, we're going to etch. And before we etch because it's a gel, we gotta make sure the teeth are dry. Otherwise it might dilute the gel and we might not get as good of an edge. So that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna etch the sixes. Now turn over soon. I don't know if you can see. See where I'm pointing right here? Can you see that on the camera? I wanna ideally place that right in the center and gingival as possible. I place it gingivally. I don't wanna be sub gingivally, but I want to place it so that she's not going to bite on it because 90% of the times when they break something, that's where it's at. Okay? Now, we already pre-measured these appliances. Okay? Can you get me that ruler? I'll show you on this side, though, for the sake of the video, how we get our number. Go ahead and turn to the other side. We line up this first molar that goes right in the buckle tube, the middle of, this, of the upper six. Okay, so I'm gonna line that up right there, exactly in the center, and we're gonna kind of get the center of the canine. So you can see that's about 25. What do you size 25? 27. The 27. Let me measure, measure again. Let me measure 27 the first time. Maybe I slid it up. Like I said, 27. <laughs> Okay, same thing on this side. And so we had those prepared and ready. We usually try to measure them at the consult visit, so that's ready to go. And again, we're gonna etch. We let this etch sit for a minimum of 20 seconds. 20 to 90 is the ideal range, okay? So the important thing is the buckle part of these. So while that's sitting there for a little bit, I'm going to show you this a little bit more. Uh, there's this hook here on the right side, and then that's where the rubber band is going to attach to. And then there's this little dot right there. That dot should go directly into that buckle groove where we measured. It doesn't matter what part of the canine the front part's on. We like it to be centered ideally, but that's not as critical. That dots is, what, is what's critical. Can you see how this rotates? that has a function to rotate that tooth around. 
So that the, the molar is what matters. In the canine, we can give give or take a millimeter. Okay. So we'll keep that covered. And like I said, a lot of times we'll have all we'll have both hooks and both appliances covered. But I'm going to show you how I want the, the adhesive put into the appliance as well. Okay. Okay, so we can start our rinse, go to an open for me. And I like to get the suction right on there. See like barely any water is even getting out. That's the most comfortable for the patient. A good rinse is just as important as a good etch. I'm getting some water in there. It's hard on the top, but big thing is we want to rinse it really good. See how white that is? How chalky white? That's what you want. If you don't get that, you gotta re etch it. I find the top reason that we don't get an etch like that is there was like a bracket or something on there before and we didn't completely clean the adhesive, so we might have to clean the adhesive a little bit better. One major thing that we already forgot, and this is my fault, is Anytime we're using any chemicals or high speed, we need to have some glasses on. So let me, yeah, we'll grab those. I can't live with myself <laughs> if I did this to my screen. <laughs> so. Shades are on. Um, yes, everything's nice and chalky. So then we're going to go and paint all the surfaces. Right here. So a little coat there. A little coat there. I say this all the time. You only need one drop, one tiny drop of a shirt to do an entire arch of braces. So for this, since you're doing six teeth, should be playing. But you also want to coat it. You know, if it happens to dry out that it's sitting on the light, I'd rather have their appliance stay on and have a good experience and do one extra drop, right? So anyways, I like to light cure this. This isn't necessary, but I like it because it slides or it's, it prevents the um, appliance, bracket, motion, hook, whatever you're putting on from sliding around as much, okay? So I just do a one beat, just to kind of let it set up a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to start with your button. And you can see why I like it like this. The hook goes backwards, and you want the hook to be, if we're wearing an elastic from this canine, to that molar, you want that hook to be right in that line so that the elastic holds on there. Good, okay. Can you turn towards the arch a little bit? Can you see that camera? I'm gonna put it on there. Right, see that? And now this is one, like for brackets, we want just the right amount. And with attachments for Invisalign, we want just the right amount. This is one thing where I like to do a little bit extra. So again, look at that hook up to that canine. That's about the angle we want so it doesn't slip off, and she can use that, and it's close to the gingiva. And then I'll take the micro brush here, and I'll just fold this extra over the top, just for a little bit added retention. So this is one where I don't clean off the excess. This is one where I like to use that excess to go over the bracket pad, because it's not like a super great fit the way brackets are designed. So, I like how that looks. Okay. And that's just since we got so beautifully placed, we're gonna light that. A lot of times I'll place them all and light them, but we'll do a little tack there, okay? And then I'll place the right side. Now, I also like to use these for this as well. It's kind of nice, I realized. Um, so maybe this way. It has specific holders for these, but it's kind of just for inventory purposes. They're kind of pain, pain in the butt. So I like this, but I can also use the wine dart. If you're placing these, you can use your discretion, but I like those personally. And so, again, we place this on that six. I kind of hold it here with the canine, and then release. 
and then kind of come back and contour it a little bit better. Okay. And again, these these I don't mind. I'll go through. And these, these are one things I don't mind having a little bit extra. On, okay. A little bit extra adhesive. I'm just gonna roll it over the on the edges here. Um, the mirror. Right here. And this is really important. You want to make sure that dot is right in that buckle groove like we talked about. I don't know if you can see it in that mirror, but that's what I'm looking at with the mirror. There's no way you can see it unless you check with the cruise on there. Okay, and you don't want it too close to the biting surface on the molar because they're going to bite it off, right? So we want to keep it a little bit incisal or a little bit gingival, but kind of in the center of the tooth. And then in the front here, can you see down into the mirror here? There's not a total fill in there, but it's okay. And so what I'm going to do, and, and when we're placing the position of the canine, I want it more incisal versus, I want it more closer to the incisal than the gingival, but not so much that they're going to bite it off because I don't want, the higher it is, the more you're gonna get extrusion, and I wanna minimize that, unless I specify that in a certain case. So again, I'm gonna kinda of put the extra adhesive right up there. I'm gonna roll the extra adhesive right off of here. Okay. And normally this goes a little faster because I'm talking, sorry, Sam, but, um, So, what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to hit the posterior, and I'm just going to show you this. It's not, Honestly, this case is okay the way it's positioned, but grab me that adhesive, the go-to. So if you don't have a great contact with this bracket pad on the canine, because like, remember I told you the posterior is what matters, you can um, lift this up, you can cure the posterior, lift this up a little bit, add some, add a little bit more right to the tooth, and then we can push this bracket pad down a little more. And that just makes me feel better. Nice to feel. Let, yeah, let me load it. So we got this guy on there, so we're going to put it as if we're going to... So I like to put it kind of... So it's facing... Like this. that right so we can put that face in the hook just that way okay now you can see these are just really flat so this is why I like to put extra on stuff like this and like anything we want to butter it into the bracket pad first okay butter it in butter it in don't get it on the hook here because then that don't interfere with the hook but we butter it in to those little tiny grooves there and then I'll put a little bit extra over top of that so then when that comes off and, and you don't want to use our glove because our glove might be contaminated with saliva okay so maybe just a little bit Little bubble. And we're gonna open. Now, assuming she's everything's dry still, we should be good to go. Great. 
Push it in to get that excess. Now again, either use the micro brush or your scaler to fold over the rest. And then kind of, okay, if we're wearing that here to there, is that elastic going to stay on? Is she going to bite on it? These are things you're thinking of as you're placing it. I think that looks pretty good. This looks good. It's all buttered into the bracket here. Now I'm going to add a little bit extra. This is, like I said, these appliances are one where I just like to add a little bit more than I normally would for like a bracket or an attachment. A little bit. We don't want to, this is one case where we don't need the bully last wheel, meaning just, you know, not too much, not too little, right? For most, for brackets and for attachments. For this one, a little bit too much is preferred. So, so I'm going to check back here, the buckle groove is lined up. If you have to favor any way with that buckle groove and for some reason you can't get this to fit just perfectly, I'd f rather favor the mesial because we're trying to derotate that tooth easily, okay? Okay. I'll take that a little bit. And we can take that extra, kind of roll it over the bracket pad here. Just for a little bit of extra retention. And I'm going to do the posterior. Now the anterior looks pretty good. I'm going to push it down a little bit. And cure it once I get this tacked. I got one second here. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's really good. good. So I'm gonna hit this all one more time because I kind of just tacked the other one so I can move along, okay? We have a motion, can you get me the our motion handout sheet so I can go over some instructions? So there's usually two sizes. We always start with the Force 1, which are six ounces. Um, I know we have different elastic in the practice here, but for these, we wanna use that, that one, okay? Um, technically, you only have to hit this with a few beeps, but I'm paranoid. So we're gonna hit it a few extra times. I'm gonna hit the back again. I'm gonna hit it over here, okay? Now, the most important thing is beyond good bonding is the instructions, okay? We wanna make sure our general instructions are they're gonna wear this full time, okay? They never wear it with the elastics without the retainer. So I'm gonna show you this retainer and I don't believe we cut out spaces for the um, for the buttons just yet, so we'll have to get our hole punch player and do that, okay? If they're wearing Invisalign, there's probably already pre-cut out um, hooks. So take that, that's something we wanna put the liners on and kinda line that up. Um, but if not, we made a retainer, then we just cut them out here. Um, you can cut them out before the appointment or you can cut them out right when you see, you know, if you're unsure about where to put it, you can put it to your side. We got a whole punch player, okay? And I'm gonna give Sin her mouth back. I wanna just do one thing that I always do for every bracket. Um, if I wind up, uh, every bracket, anything we bond, I do the stability test. And that's where 
I basically have tried to rip it off here because I want it to come off here while I have the stuff on then like when they get at home so like when the kid said oh I was just eating a saltine cracker or something and it just magically fell off I usually just say oh that's weird but deep down in my heart I know that's not true because I do this to every single bracket and every appliance that comes in here see your head sorry to shake your head but um, <laughs> that's just how I know that we put brackets on the right way so I hate to point fingers but this is what we do for every bracket <laughs> um, okay let's take this off so we checked that but then now I want to make sure she's not biting on those hooks I'm pretty darn sure she's not because I put them low enough but let's just make take a look open and bite down beautiful bite down Bite looks pretty darn good. I think if she does a good job, she won't be wearing this long. But here's a, while we're here, let's check your bite. Go ahead and open. Stick your tongue up to the top of your mouth. Let me wiggle your jaw shut. Open. Let me wiggle it though. Let me do it. <laughs> yeah, okay. let, let me do it. Yeah. Okay, hold right there. So you can see she's class two on this side. Not much, but enough to where I want to make it better. Open again. Stick your tongue up to the top of your mouth. Yeah, she's got kind of a dual bite. So we want to get that more socked in. So we're going to help to push that back a little bit and shift her midline over. Now, she has to wear it on both sides, though, because if you don't, your smile will start canting. So you need a balancing side. This side needs a little improvement as well, okay? So with the retainers, are we still good on that? Is it still, still? Okay, good. So where's that? Do you want to stop it and start a new one so it doesn't... I know where I put that. So we're going to punch that hole up. Okay. And then we don't want these sharp edges there, so we'll do a minor little punch as well. Sorry, getting dirty. So we have a little window like that. Right? And we'll do the other side. And you've been wearing these retainers, so you already know that they're comfortable? Yes. Okay. Good. Sorry, I actually wouldn't do this on somebody, but we just want to make sure that these line up. See that hook's hidden right there in the back? So I want to make sure that she can hook those. So I'm going to actually move, I'm going to move it back a little bit too. So we're going to do one more little distal punch so she can have access to those hooks. We don't want any sharp edges. Now you don't want to take away, you want to try to keep as much plastic as you can. Now this is good sturdy retainer, but the idea is we don't want those molars to rotate. So we want those attachments to be in there, but at the same time, just got to be able to get the, the rubber bands on there. So let's see if she can get those. That one looks like it might be a little tight. You might have to adjust this one a little bit more actually. But anyways, let's go over it and show these really quick. Um, anytime you're wearing the elastics, you're wearing the retainer. The retainer holds the teeth in place and protect, prevents the lower teeth from shifting while we're trying to move the lower teeth back, okay? You're going to want to stay away from hard, sticky, chewy foods, um, cut them into smaller pieces, anything you would for normal uh, braces, um, orthodontic kind of appliance, okay? Um, when you come in every visit, um, you're going to want to check, okay, first of all, grade their elastics. Um, did they come in wearing them? Did they come in wearing the retainer? You also want to check the hygiene of the retainer. I'm finding a lot of kids are putting it in with food over it. So I always emphasize that to the patient and the parent is you will get cavities if you don't take care of this thing, okay? You do want to rinse and brush around it. If the appliance comes loose, what I find a lot of times too is that maybe this part will come loose and they'll yank it off. That whole appliance is destroyed. These are very expensive. So we want to try to tell them not to yank it off. Give us a call. Come on in. If a bottom one breaks, it's not an emergency, but we want you to continue with the elastic. So... Um, we'll get you in. If the retainer breaks, stop the elastics until we can make you a new retainer, okay? Um, when they come in, what we should expect is a little space in between these two teeth and a little space between these two teeth, right? Because we're distalizing, and then these two should be a little wiggly. That's kind of our markers to see if they're wearing them well or not, okay? If they're not, and they say they're wearing them all the time, and I don't see that, eh, then I don't know. Again, I never call anyone a liar, but those are kind of what the things we're looking for, right? Um, that's pretty much it. Usually if you do a good job with these, it's three to six months, okay, for most people. 
Um, so, and then we'll eventually, if you do get job with the Force 1s, and once you get used to it, then we'll move you up to the Force 2s, which are 8 ounces, okay? One thing, if for someone like Sin, she's got some, some history of jaw joint issues. So you're going to have to let me know if your jaw joint starts giving you issues, then we might have to take a time out with the elastics or keep on the Force 1s, okay? So this, these are things we want to talk about with our patients as well. I think that's about it. I think I covered everything. Did I? Good?